Welcome, dear viewers. In this series of videos, we're diving deep into the world of Transformers, covering everything from A to Z. By the end of this series, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of Transformers and learn many new and fascinating things. We'll explore key components like the expansion tank, main tank, radiator, bushings, cores, and the Buchholz relay, oil filling process, air cells, tap changer, transformer conservator isolation valve, and much more. If you want to learn everything about Transformers and all its components in a compact form in a single video, then just click this video. The link is in the description, in the i button, and also at the end of this video. So, without further ado, let's get started and unravel the mysteries of Transformers together. In this video, we'll just cover the basics of Transformers. Let's kick things off by examining the main tank of a Transformer. This crucial component acts as a protective shield safeguarding the most vital parts of the transformer from the outside environment. It also functions as a reservoir for transformer oil and supports all other accessories. Inside this hollow main tank, we find three key elements. The core, the heart of the transformer, essential for magnetic induction. The winding, the intricate coils responsible for creating and receiving the magnetic fields. Naphenic, or paraffinic oil. This oil plays a critical role in cooling and insulating the transformer. Now that we have a glimpse of the main tank's inner workings, let's dive deeper into each of these components to understand their significance and how they contribute to the overall functionality of the transformer. First, we will see the heart of the transformer, its core and winding. Understanding these elements is crucial, so let's explore them in detail before circling back to the big picture. The fundamental working principle of every transformer is electromagnetic induction, as described by Faraday's first law. This law states that whenever a conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field, an electromotive force, EMF, is induced. If the conductor circuit is closed, this results in an induced current. A varying magnetic field can be easily created using a coil and an alternating EMF system. As the alternating current fluctuates, so does the magnetic field associated with the coil. However, not all magnetic fields are effectively utilized. To prevent waste, we place a ferromagnetic iron core between the coils. This core concentrates the magnetic field from the primary coil and directs it into the secondary coil. In a transformer, the coil receiving the alternating current, creating the varying magnetic fields, is called the primary coil. The coil where the load is connected is known as the secondary coil, and this is core of the transformer. It is composed of thin, insulated sheets of soft iron designed to minimize losses due to eddy currents. Now, let's break down how EMF works in transformers in an engaging and easy-to-understand way. When the turns in a coil are arranged in series, the total EMF induced across the winding is the sum of the individual EMFs induced in each turn. In the secondary coil, this is represented as capital E secondary is equal to small e secondary multiplied by n secondary, where small e secondary is the EMF per turn in the secondary coil, and n secondary is the number of turns in the secondary coil. Both primary and secondary coils experience the same magnetic flux. This means the EMF per turn is identical for both coils, so small e secondary is equal to small e primary where small e secondary is the EMF per turn in the secondary coil, and small e primary is the EMF per turn in the primary coil. For the primary coil, this relationship is given by small e primary is equal to capital E primary divided by n primary, where capital E primary is the applied input voltage, and n primary is the number of turns in the primary coil. Therefore, the induced EMF in the secondary coil can be expressed as capital E secondary is equal to capital E primary multiplied by the ratio of n secondary to n primary. Here, capital E primary is fixed and the number of turns in the primary coil, n primary, usually remains constant. So, by adjusting the number of turns in the secondary coil, n secondary, we can easily alter the voltage output at the secondary coil. So, we can say that a transformer is a device that receives AC power at one voltage and delivers it at another voltage. There are two main types of transformers. Step-up transformer. A step-up transformer increases the voltage from low to high. Here, the ratio n secondary by n primary is greater than 1, 
meaning the secondary coil has more turns than the primary coil. According to the conservation of energy, E secondary into I secondary is equal to E primary into I primary, where E secondary is the EMF in the secondary coil, I secondary is the current in the secondary coil. E primary is the applied voltage in the primary coil, and I primary is the input current. In a step-up transformer, the induced EMF in the secondary coil, E secondary, is greater than the applied input voltage, E primary so I secondary will be less than I primary. So the complete definition is that a step-up transformer converts AC power at low voltage and high current to AC power at high voltage and low current. Step-down transformer. A step-down transformer decreases voltage from high to low. Here, the ratio N secondary by N primary is less than one, meaning the secondary coil has fewer turns than the primary. Again, according to energy conservation, E secondary into I secondary is equal to E primary into I primary. In a step-down transformer, E secondary is less than E primary, so I secondary is greater than I primary. So, the complete definition is that a step-down transformer converts AC power at high voltage and low current to AC power at low voltage and high current. Easy way to remember. Remember this simple trick, S for secondary. So just focus on the secondary coil, and current will behave opposite to voltage. Therefore, a step-up transformer means everything in the secondary goes up, except current, and a step-down transformer means everything in the secondary goes down, except current. Now that you know the basics, you can easily understand and remember how transformers work. These are the different types of losses in a transformer. Core losses or iron losses. Core losses occur in the transformer's core and are divided into two main types. 1. Hysteresis loss. 2. Eddy current loss. Copper losses, IQR losses. Copper losses occur in the transformer windings due to the resistance of the conductors. Stray losses. Stray losses are due to leakage fluxes that induce eddy currents in parts other than the core and windings, like the transformer tank and structural parts. Dielectric losses. Dielectric losses occur in the insulating materials of the transformer. Magnetostriction losses. Magnetostriction losses are associated with the physical expansion and contraction of the core material when magnetized. Mechanical losses. Mechanical losses are due to the vibrations and noise produced by the alternating magnetic field in the transformer core. These are the different types of losses in a transformer. Dear viewer, this was just an introduction video. In the upcoming video series, we will discuss each and everything in detail. So please subscribe to my channel and kindly like this video.